Hello, this is Katherine Dubberly, the Answer Lady. I'm a big fan of Kiss Looms. I greatly enjoy mine. And I am cooperating with Kelly at Kiss Looms to make you a playlist of all the basic techniques that you might ever want to know on all of the looms. So welcome and enjoy. Let's talk about knitting the thumb on loom knitted mittens. It turns out that my favorite hand knitting method and my favorite machine knitting method do not lend themselves very well to loom knitting. So I needed to come up with something else. And a good friend of mine who also machine knits introduced me to a thumb style that she uses for machine knitted mittens and I thought we'd try it here and it turns out it works very well. We're going to knit the cuff, which I've already done. There it is. And the area between the cuff and the base of the thumb, which I've also already done. That's the stockinette portion you're looking at. And now we're going to knit up one side of the thumb, down the other, and then resume the mitten. I'm going to add one little refinement in that my thumb will actually be knitted on these seven pegs. But for the first few rows, I'm going to include eight and nine, and then I'm going to decrease because your thumb is wider down here. I've already done it just on the seven the whole way, and it does work, but I think we're going to get a little nicer fit if I do what I'm doing here. So I've knitted up to this point, and that's actually going to be one of the thumb stitches for the first few rows. Then I'm going to knit across these. and include this one. So this row has nine stitches in it. Now sometimes you might want to slip the first row of the return row, first stitch I mean, but in this case I do not. I want to make sure that all nine of my stitches get knitted. And then on the next row, I will start the decreasing. And the decreasing is not going to work in the way it normally does. Usually, we would move stitches over or something like that. In this case, I'm just going to not knit the edge stitches. So now we have two rows that each has nine stitches. If I wanted to keep going with nine, I would now wrap this peg that I just knitted. But I'm not going to. I'm going to start wrapping only seven. And I'm not going to wrap that one. So I have effectively decreased the size of the thumb. And this is an experiment. In the future, I may decide to do more than two rows. By the way, I'm working with worsted weight yarn and knitting it moderately tightly to get about five stitches per inch. I like my sweaters to be loose and drapey of a fabric, but I think for mittens and socks, it's more comfortable, more appropriate, more windproof and everything to knit a little bit more tightly. So now we're going to knit on whatever number of stitches we've decided runs up the thumb, in this case seven, for whatever distance we've decided on. For my thumb, I'm going to need to stop and measure. I think it's two and a half inches. But I will knit up to the top. I'll keep knitting down here and we'll visit again when I'm ready to increase for the bottom of the thumb. I've knitted the thumb. Let me pull the flap that it made out. You can see it's still attached around here to the main part of the mitten. This will be the thumb. Now I'm going to tuck it back out of the way so we can continue. There are a couple more thumb rows that need to be knitted. Actually four. And here's how to do it. I need this peg to make an increase on, but if I just knit into the stitch that's on it, same is true over here, I'm going to get things attached where I don't want them to be attached. So I'm going to temporarily move those out of my way. Now, on my next row, this was the last stitch knitted, I'm going to wrap the now empty peg. 
and knit across these seven and also wrap this now empty peg whoops there that's better I missed one wrap you might have noticed let's knit these across So that's the first of the four increasing rows that I'm going to make. Now I'm going to wrap back, and this time we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll go ahead and wrap and knit the eighth peg because we can. So one increase has been completed. We'll knit these over. These are just perfectly normal. Now we're going to wrap, let me align that a little bit, wrap the very first one as well as these seven. And the ninth one. So that will be the second increase completed. And this is row three of the increasing procedure. On row four, every single one of the nine stitches that are involved in the base of the thumb will be wrapped and knitted. Okay, when I finish knitting over the nine stitches this time, the thumb will be complete. The base of the thumb has nine stitches on each side, so it's really a total of 18. And the top of the thumb has seven stitches on each side. By each side, I mean front and back of the thumb. So it's really a total of 14. And we will seam these stitches after the mitten is off of the loom. Now the stitches that were held on the next door pegs can be moved back into their normal positions. That one was dropped. There it is. And now we can proceed with knitting around and around and around until we get to the fingertip. Here's the thumb before finishing. We'll touch these edges together and seam them and touch these edges together and seam them. You're looking at an open cuff because I made this uh, ribbing on knitting needles so these edges must be seamed together too but it really doesn't matter to the issue of making the thumb which is done the same way however the ribbing is made. And down here at the bottom, you'll see we've got a couple more stitches involved than we do farther up because we decreased. Here's what I like about this type of thumb. It's ambidextrous. There it is on my right hand. And here it is on my left hand. Because of how and where it fits on the mitten, it's fine on either hand. And the seam is very nice. I was afraid the seam would make an awkward place, a stiff place, or unattractive. It's not either one of those things. The only thing is that if I had, say, knitted a heart there, or a cable, or any other kind of design that you might put there, then the mittens become handed, and this has to be the left mitten, because on this hand it would end up in the right palm. 